Welcome to episode 4. Many individuals, students, parents, academics view grading or marking scripts and projects as an activity which arises at the end of a teaching period. In some cases, it is asserted that faculty dread the grading season, due largely to the limited time period assigned for its completion and also the requirement to be able to justify their marking and grading decisions to their students, institution and the community. This podcast considers the grading process and aims to persuade you that grading needs to be managed, planned and linked with teaching and is not a periphery exercise. The interconnectivity between teaching, learning, assessment design and grading must be acknowledged and managed. Some students may engage in learning activities due to grades being awarded. It is wise to use this situation to promote student learning rather than ignoring their concern about grades. Grading is part of the system which helps students learn what they need and giving a response and evaluating student achievement. According to Green and Emerson 2007, grading is the process by which student work is assigned some code, a letter, mark, percentage or status. Wolverud and Anderson 1998 take a more dynamic approach in that they refer to grading as 1 a process by which a teacher assesses student learning through tests and assignments. Two, the context in which good teachers establish the process. And three, the dialogue that surrounds grades and defines their meaning to various audiences. Sadler 2009 notes that grades can have a profound influence and positive effect on a student's sense of achievement, acting as goals that provide motivation to engage proactively with and go beyond module material. Opinion is divided on whether class participation should be graded, with one school maintaining that grades reflect student performance and achievement, participation is not an achievement, while the other takes the view that discussion is a very valuable aspect of student learning. Regardless of whether you grade performance, achievement or participation, it is essential to apply the principle underpinning effective grading, as articulated by Wolverd and Anderson 1997. Grade what you teach and teach what you grade. Assessing student learning is complex as it is based on student response to divergent assessment tasks completed on a group or individual basis. These tasks may include a formal examination, a seminar presentation or the creation of a specialised artefact. In the case of the latter two components, questions arise as to what is to be graded and how. Is it the product? the process, or both. If one of your module learning outcomes is that students engage in collaborative learning, then it is recommended that students are taught how to operate in groups and grade it accordingly. Two commonly cited approaches to grading are criterion referenced, used in UCD, and norm referenced. The criterion referenced approach involves setting out a predetermined set of criteria before teaching and assessment has taken place. Student grades and marks are then awarded based on how well student performance matches those criteria in the various assessment tasks. With norm reference grading, the results are expressed in terms of comparison of students after teaching is over. Neither approach is perfect and must be carefully thought through. With the criterion referenced approach, the module coordinator will specify the intended assessment outcomes. That is, produce a report, analyse a case study, make a short presentation. The guidelines for each assessment task will include the criteria to be used in grading student work and the rationale underpinning the process. For example, when assigning an essay to a first-year student group, it is crucial that written guidelines setting out the task aims and requirements are provided, along with the grading criteria to be applied. In many instances, there is evidence that the quality of student submissions is enhanced by their knowing in advance, the relative importance of the academic sources used to prepare the essay, the level of description or analysis required, expectations regarding essay writing style and the referencing style to be used. Students frequently ask, what do I need to get an A grade? One way to answer this question is to prepare assignment-specific grade descriptors based on the assessment criteria provided. Grade descriptors are the set of standards to be reached across a range of generic criteria in order to achieve different grades. 
For example, to achieve an A grade for an essay or report, specific standards are identified such as the introduction clearly sets out the background to the topic. The writing style is excellent. All aspects of the topic have been considered. Detailed analysis citing supporting evidence is provided and so on. Is your grading time efficient? Several techniques are recommended to improve grading efficiency, such as preparing and using marking schemes, limiting the basis for grading, upgrading the guidelines provided, or asking students to organise their work for your efficiency. This episode provides a bird's eye view of good practice in grading, but does not consider some of the more frequently cited challenges, such as the aggregation of component grades or marks to produce the final module grade, the possibility of marker bias, and the issue of grade reliability. Grading is a complex exercise in which context and dialogue are important, and for which planning is required. To conclude, it is useful to note the criteria for an effective grading system. 1. It should accurately reflect differences in student performance. 2. It should be clear to students so that they should be able to chart their progress. And 3. It should be fair.